All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode this week. I am your mm. co-host, Chris. Now, co-host. Now, I am the host, Chris, <laughs> and that is my uh, co-host, Will. <laughs> my second said time it right doing the first this. Time. <laughs> she said it right no. the first time. That's instinct. It's, it's uh, instinctual. That's just how it goes. It's okay, Chris. That's so just bad. <laughs> let the people I can't know. believe the second time I've ever tried to do that intro, I have now... <laughs> botched it and said you were the host that's the dumbest thing i've ever done right, hey what's up this is also pickleball will i'm your host of the pickleball studio <laughs> podcast and uh i'm gonna let my co-host do the rest of this because obviously he's my assistant so chris take it away like you always do oh my do. gosh <laughs> yes i am chris that is will i am the host that is the co-host we're never gonna mess that up again <laughs> all right well that's a good start to this week's pod but yeah. uh, we ha we actually have some fun stuff to go over. There's a bit of news this week, and then our main topic about uh, pickleball players being delusional about their ratings, or just ratings in general. <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this one, because mm -hmm. I did some interesting digging on the internet, and I think there will be some good discussion points slash laugh slash chatter. It'll be... Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be great. You know, this yeah. has always been a high topic like for pickleball since... I, I guess it kind of blew up, right? Pickball player. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Go For ahead. sure. All right. First thing I want to show people. So on April Fool's Day, let me grab the paddle here. So on April Fool's Day, I didn't do anything this year. I wanted to. We kind of all talked about doing something, and it just kind of slipped away from me time-wise. However. Yeah. No, we did do I something. Did get a, what did we, we did do? do? Some, well, well, Carbon did something. Team. Oh, <laughs> I guess we were we were like a part of it, but we didn't do it. They just said, no. "Can we do this for you?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I please tell me that they sent you one, and you're about to show it on screen right now. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Carbon did a like fake product launch, and then had pictures with all the reviewers and fake quotes of them like reviewing a nut cup, and it was <laughs> all of the posts were very funny. But here's what's even better. I played with somebody this last week and like someone hit an overhead and it just nailed the dude right in the junk. And we oh. all started laughing. And my friend looks at me and he goes, dude, did Carbon send you one of those? Because you got to give it to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the guy immediately went online, tried to search it up and try to purchase. Actually, yo, I don't know if he was trolling me or not, but my buddy Mo. Um, uh, the one who sends you the Lukey Grips. Shout outs to Mo yeah. and the Lukey Grips. Yep, shout um, out to him. He, he said he saw that and he actually went online to see if he could buy it. Like he thought <laughs> it was legit. And I was like, there's no way you thought that was a real Mo. He's like, ah, uh, and you know what? After he kind of stuttered a bit, I was like, you know what, Mo? I wouldn't have put it past you because that's something that he would do. <laughs> But yeah, that's love, so funny. I love, love that guy to death. All right. Anyways, uh, but yes, that was great. But then I did get several packages in the mail that day. It had actually been a minute since any packages came out, but I got Ooh. one from 11624 because I had just told them, I said, hey, could you guys send me a couple more Haraches? Like, I like the paddle. I'm probably going to use it for a bit. I just want to have some backups for tournaments if I ever need it. And they were like, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And they had just come back in stock. So that's what I was expecting. And then I opened the box and I see what I expected. And then at the bottom, yeah, I see this beautiful yeah. battle. <laughs> oh, which, oh my God. <laughs> if you guys are listening, they sent me a April Fool's paddle. It's the their Kevlar Harache that they've been working on. But it has my logo in the middle, a Rubik's Cube. And then it says so you. Harache 3-5. But the E in Harache <laughs> is a 3. And then dash 5. The company name on the paddle. It also says 11635 instead of 11624 11, on the paddle. Oh, that's so, so good. So, I don't know. I just thought this was hilarious hey. getting this in the mail hey bright side chris you finally got your own paddle collab congratulations I, how does it feel i don't know if i'd really call this a collab but i'll take it it's better than nothing i can say it's this you know what this kind of feels like yeah this feels like the uh not the the participation trophies that's what this uh, feels like well be careful chris because i might steal that collab from you in fact rio Isaac, this is the perfect spot to, to put that meme we we photographed. Do it right now. Flash it on the oh screen. My gosh. <laughs> I'll make sure he has access to that meme. That was oh a pretty gosh. funny meme that we shot. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought this was pretty pretty hilarious to get in the mail. That was definitely clever clever of them. Um, but actually, one other thing I do want to talk about. This is the only paddle I have to talk about this week because I have been working on the Yola review so much that I haven't gotten Ooh. to play test a whole lot of other paddles, um, which actually, speaking of... Those are going to launch on the 16th of April. Yola finally made a post, so Yay. they are coming soon, and that's what I'm working on. I will have reviews up on uh, launch day, so stay tuned for that. You know what else that. is coming soon once that thing launches? What? Bruises and body bags. The count is going to go up across the board, across the country. Across the nation. <laughs> across the nation. Oh, yeah. Um, everybody bring bring goggles and bring ice packs to your local rec play and to your tournaments because it's going to happen. Yep. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Okay, so I haven't gotten to hit this yet, uh, but I am eager to hit it. We what got it? another wide body paddle. This is the Spartus Apollo. Oh, nice. There's been a lot of chatter about this in my Discord. The shape of it's really interesting. It, uh, wait, I haven't, s- yeah, here you go. It looks like a uh, Mach 2. You better say what I'm thinking. Mach 2? Oh, that's not what I was thinking, but... It's, Solaire? <laughs> it is. No, I wasn't. Not even that it looks like another pickleball paddle. It looks like one of those things you scoop a pizza out of the oven with. Oh, snap. You're right. Like one of those boards, you know? Yes. The pans, the board. I see what you're saying. Shoot, you know, we should do I that. don't know if it's wider than the other ones, but like the shape definitely looks different. Like when you look at this in person, you're like, holy moly, that is a really square, fat face. So. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is the first wide body Kevlar paddle to hit the market. So I am curious to see huh. how that plays out. Um, but yeah, people in the Discord have been loving it who have hit it. So I'm I'm very eager to hit this thing. And you asked them to send me one. Actually, I uh, they reached out to me a little while ago. I need to follow up with them. But they said they would send me some stuff because I haven't hit with any yeah. Spartus paddles. It's like, I think it's 140 <laughs> before a discount code. So, you know, even after a discount code, it's even cheaper. So. Okay. It's it's a very reasonably priced uh, wide body paddle, so got eager it, to hit it, it for sure. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, moving on. Uh, I want to talk about this. I think you said you haven't watched it yet, but there's a pickleball documentary, Breaking mm-hmm. Pickleball. You haven't watched it yet, right? No, with Kyle, I was, I was, I, I knew about it. I know about it because Kyle posted about it, and he, uh, in his post, he said that it would release April first. And I mean, just from the trailer itself, I didn't know it was a joke or not, but I was like, no, there's no way this is a joke. I mean, it could have been, but I was like, if it's not a joke, it's going to look really good because that trailer looked incredible. So, I mean, yeah. you said it's good. You watched it? Yeah. So they're releasing one episode a week for the next Heck yeah. four to six weeks, I think. So the next one comes out tomorrow, the day that this podcast launches. And All right. the first All right. episode was great. It was very, you could tell it was very high production. Like it's people who have clearly had to have worked on documentaries before. Uh, the story was good. I was probably a little more invested than the average person on the first episode because Why is that? we know Kyle and he yeah. was one of the main focuses. I mean, so, Dude, I feel like a lot of people in the pickleball world, I just assume that they know Kyle because he's, I think he's one of the most like, or the more well-known, I guess, pickleball influencers or content creators, personalities, you know, he does. He just hit 100,000 on YouTube. Yo, shout outs to that pickleball guy, my boy Kyle Kazuda, crushing it. And yeah. you know it's funny? He did say he he called that out, I think, a year ago when he started like I think you had ten K at the time. He started at zero. He's like, dude, we'll, uh he's like, Chris, I'm I'm gonna surpass you in like a couple months and you're like, not a shot. And then he's like, I'm gonna surpass you and then I'm gonna hit hundred K within a certain time frame. He did it. He did it, man. He did. He did. The teaching content goes hard in pickleball. It is by far the best. If there was a type of pickleball content to get into in pickleball, if you can teach, for sure the highest view count you will get is Yeah, or teaching. the highest growth and potential for sure. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. But yeah, for sure, guys, I will leave a link down in the description. You should definitely go and watch the documentary. It's very well made. I'm excited to see the other episodes and see where they take the other stories. And I hope that we see it for you know more of the tour. So I don't know if we said this, but Jigsaw Health was... Uh, the ones that made this or they hired a production team to do it and mm-hmm. then it was about their Arizona Pickleball League yeah. and the players playing in the league. So, yeah, shout, if you shout like Pickleball, to Jigsaw. watch it. They, yeah, yeah, they do such a good job with the Orchard. I'm pretty sure they're the main sponsors or they're the owners of that um, 
event and I yeah, know they own it. The building they are right, and uh, the per- the people who do their stream. I think it's actually um, uh, Eddie, Eddie from Eddie and Webby. They're he's the one who helps you know set up the stream, and they do a phenomenal job. So like shout us to them. I think that is the kind of product that pickleball needs. You know what I mean? Like just kind of like more localized, but still done at a high you know production value. Feel you know entertaining, and I don't know. I, that's that's what I like to see more of, and that's what I think we're trying to do here in Oklahoma. And I think a lot of other states and cities and towns are also trying to do something like that too. It just feels I don't know more organic. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, moving on. We have PPA is now using Duper as their official rating system. This news came out this week, and okay. unfortunately, there's not any. Like basically they just announced that it was the official rating system. They didn't say how it was going to impact things, how they were planning to integrate it. But I definitely have questions about how it'll be integrated because Mm -hmm. is it just going to be like, Hey, we're partnered with them. And now all the stuff will be entered into duper because you know, it was all this after the whole merger and whatnot, or after everything went down duper with Steve was separate. And a lot of tournaments weren't getting entered into duper because Tom Dunn owns pickleball brackets and yada, yada, yada. So it's like, okay, is it exciting now because every tournament will get entered or is it exciting because Duper will actually be enforced so that you can't sandbag? And then if that is the case, I have questions on how they will do that. Like, Yeah, don't they still need to fix the algorithm? Like there's people who Yeah, they do change it all the time. (laughs) It's still, I feel like it's still not accurate or very inaccurate for some people, new people out there and... I don't know. It just, I still, basically, I still hear complaints about it. People can't raise their dupers even though they're winning certain tournaments or events or they lost, you know, way back and now it's affecting their score now. I don't know. I don't know how the algorithm is being calculated or what's done about it now and or if they're still making changes and improvements on it. Here, well, I mean, they're definitely making changes and then, you know, improvements is probably debatable depending on who you ask. But <laughs> okay. Yeah. The thing that, I think is really interesting when people complain about duper. It's certainly not perfect. I've seen some really wonky stuff. Actually, right before we got on this pod, I think I saw a Facebook post. A guy said a brand new person to duper played a 3.7 and like a 4.1 duper. And he won that match 11-4. And then he was rated as a 499. And I was like, okay, that's kind of wonky. That's really high. So that definitely happens. But what I will say is if you have a lot of tournament matches like you or me where mm-hmm. we've played in a bunch of PPAs, we've, you know, been different parts of the country, I yeah. have never felt that my duper has been off. I've never been mad how much I've dropped at a tournament. I'm like, yeah, I played poorly there. It dropped how I would have expected or it went up and I'm like, yeah, that's probably about. So sometimes I wonder if people are a little too paranoid about it or they just don't go to enough tournaments because with enough big match history, I'm like, I like mine's like a four seven right now. And I'm like, that feels fine. And there's a lot of matches. So I don't know. Some of the complaints I'm like, what are you basing it off of? Just like local leagues or rec matches? Cause that to me means nothing like that. It probably will be inaccurate. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think, let me see my doubles. I think you're probably, you're on the same as me. What, 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 what am I? I'm like a four eight right now. I think you're probably like a four eight or a four nine. If I had to guess, I haven't seen it in a minute. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a minute. I just know I had a huge drop somewhere. I forgot when or why. But, I mean, I'm not mad at it. I'm like, yeah, I play at a 4.8 level on average, I would say. And we could all play higher. But really, it's. I think what people need to worry about more is not necessarily the number, but it's like, well, I mean, you should worry about the number, but it's the gap, right? On your worst day, how well do you play compared to your best day? Because if that gap is wide, then, yeah, you're somewhere in the middle. Like, you know, so yeah. don't be mad. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can play much better than what their duper says but like on your worst day you know and that could be the day that you play in a tournament you know because that's when yeah you know things matter and you get tight you get tense because you're playing in a tournament and you don't play so well and maybe your duper drops and that's okay but i think you know we'll talk more about this but people kind of inflate themselves with their own duper and maybe it's an ego thing because oh no i play at this level but you know my duper dropped down to this because i played bad one time in this one tournament i was like well that's how it goes. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, for sure. And what I want to know how they're going to do with this is like, okay, if you're going to try and use it to help prevent sandbagging, uh-huh. there's a couple 
potential problems I have. For example, let's say that guy that beat the 3-7 and the 4-1, he got rated a 4-9-9. Let's say he has a PPA like three weeks from now and he doesn't play another match. Yeah. And they see that and they go, oh, this guy should be playing 5-0 or at least 4-5 if you round <laughs> down. But maybe he is actually just like a a 4-2 and he should be somewhere like 4-0, maybe 4-5. Like, how are they going to determine what the cutoff is? If their profile is new, are they going to use the data? Like, I just want to know how they're going to implement yeah. that to prevent sandbagging because it could be just as problematic. Like, if your duper's too high, you might get put in a bracket you'll get murdered in. Or vice versa. I don't know. That's yeah. i just curious what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see how it all pans out. I'm sure there'll be many more discussions that we will have later on this year about dupers and ratings, etc. Like yeah. it's not going anywhere and it's not perfect by any means. There's a long way to go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Last uh -huh. thing for news. Anna yes. Lee got her hundredth PPA title win this weekend. Ooh. She triple crowned. So did Ben actually his first triple crown of the year. Ooh. So pretty, pretty crazy. A hundred titles is insane. I don't know off the top of my head what Catherine is, who I believe is the second highest woman with the most amount of PPA titles, I think. Okay. But 100 is wild. That's a lot of flipping titles. Yeah. Shoot. Do you think so? I re I'm really curious what Catherine's PPA titles. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Sure. I, I, if I'm going by memory, I feel like it's somewhere between 40 and 60. It's like in that range. Also, <laughs> how long do you think it'll take Anna Lee to get 200? How long did it take her to get 100? <laughs> I mean, I guess Double I don't that. know when she started playing PPA, like 2021, <laughs> maybe. Mm. But I wonder who will, you know, even better, I wonder who will do it first, Ben or Anna Lee to hit 200. Ooh, Anna Lee. That would be my prediction as well. Yes, I think Anna Lee. All right, it's not any showing anywhere that's really quick. So, okay. yeah, unfortunately, I can't find it. Well, I mean, it's anyways, this on her Wikipedia, it says 16 PPA tour tour titles, but there has to be yeah, more. There's no way that's right. updated. I okay. actually, mm, you know what? I think I might be off on the 40 to 60. I think I actually might. I feel like I might be confusing that with a different stat. I don't know if 16 is right, but I think I'm off on the 40 to 60. I think I'm okay. confusing that with another one. Well, if one of you guys know, let us know in the comments of how much it is and then Chris yeah. you can pin it okay there you go moving perfect next. all right moving on Primary we have our topic. main topic yes well why are this week all players so bad at guessing other players ratings yes so yes. this came into discussion because we mm -hmm. posted our paddle reviewer battle video which was me you Brayden John and we rotated with all of us and played some games and yes. within I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes, you just start seeing the comments rolling in. And I'm just like, holy moly, these people are savages. People are like, these guys are three O's. Like, I can't believe we listen to them for paddle advice. This is for sure three five. None of these guys are even four O. Like, some people were like posting comments and then deleting them. And it was like, <laughs> Comments were all over the place. And There's now, just I will say. no way. When I saw that, I was like, there's no way they see this and they think that we're three oh three like okay. Three five, maybe, because you know that's that's you. That's that's your brand. <laughs> okay, three five at best. I thought maybe it could be a joke, but to say we're three oh, I was like, there's just no way. How could you I know. What? <laughs> What's going I on? What world, what dimension are you you living in, you know? Now, it of course doesn't help that John and I got pickled in the first game, which is yeah. absolutely insane. I genuinely yeah. think if we did that game that match 10 times, I don't think that happens again. Uh, well, I guess I will have to do it again. I don't know. Shoot. We're for sure doing it again. The next time all four of us are together, we should just refilm the video. Okay, okay. But, but it, we'll, 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 go, we'll go in reverse order. It'll be yes. me and John first. Yeah, and me then and Because I think me when I you. had... Exactly. Because when I had John, he was kind of warmed up. He knew the games. Maybe his confidence was up. Um, I'm just sad I couldn't get John the dub. I was... I should have gotten him the dub. I was like, okay, I'm getting you the dub. We were like up 12, seven or something Eight like that something, at one point. Yeah. yeah. And then I had a few miss hits and then you're playing a little hot. And then I was, I should have just turned up the jets just a little bit, but I was playing too laxed and I was like, and I, I messed up and that's par for the course 
for me. I mean, well, you know that playing with yeah. me has many times. I just goof around like way too much. But yeah, that is your default mode is like goofing around. Dude, that's what I'm telling you. That's why I don't like games up to 15. I got to like stay focused for way longer. I'm like, oh gosh, you know, because in my mind, when we hit 11, when I hit 11, I was like, oh, I technically already won this thing. All right, whatever. On to the next one. You know what I'm saying? And That's how I needed you to feel when you were playing John and I the first the first game. Oh. I needed you to chill after 11. I mean, I was chill that whole entire thing. The rest of it, that was all on you guys. You know, <laughs> you activated 3.5 at best, Chris. And I was like, oh, okay, shoot. I don't even have to do anything. I don't even need to play up to my duper. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's funny. But yeah, after seeing all these comments, it really did make me laugh. And I knew they were going to happen, right? Because if you've ever watched literally any pickleball video of gameplay that is not pro, if it says like 5-5 five, five, advanced level pickleball, I promise you there's a comment in there that says, this is 3-5 back in my local courts. Like every single time that comment will be there. Mm-hmm. It's the most classic meme in pickleball. So I, I knew it was coming, but it was just so funny to see because I'm like, what is the... So he, I would say, I think, let's see, all of our dupers, let's I think this. I did check actually. I think yours was like 509. Braden's was like four eight minus four seven, and I think John's was like four two five. But John also hasn't played a tournament in a while, so his might not be mm. super up to date. But I just laugh because I'm like, I don't know. Do people think you just accidentally get to like oh nearly a five zero duper with like three hundred plus matches or something? It's like I don't know. Maybe <laughs> shoot. These they. I think the thing is is that. We, we talked about this before that most people don't record themselves or have yeah. ever seen themselves play and yep. they don't know how bad that they look or how awkward they look. Sometimes when I watch my own footage, I'm like, wow, I don't look nearly as good as I thought I do. And yes. it's just the way it is. It's hard to make it. I mean, and you know what's funny? I think that goes for almost any sport. <laughs> like, if, like, <laughs> Imagine if you recorded somebody, I don't know, playing basketball, baseball, hockey, whatever whatever it may be. I bet you most people do not look as good as they think that they do. There, There is a very high chance that that is. I think pickleball, if I had to guess, is even worse. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Compared to other sports, and we'll get yeah. into why I think that. But just like you said, if you have never filmed yourself playing pickleball, I highly encourage you just take your iPhone and either have someone hold it or buy a cheap $10 tripod on Amazon and film some of your games film a whole and game. watch it back. Yeah. And watch find, it back. Find the point that was the most memorable to you, the most exciting and watch it back and I can almost almost guarantee you you'll watch it back and say, "Wow, that does not look nearly as cool as it felt." Every no, time, every time. It, does, it never looks as cool because Pickleball, I'm not going to lie, unless you're playing like singles in the pros, maybe dust some dubs in the pros, like it does not look cool. I'm telling you right now. I just, I know it. Pickleball does not look cool and it's fine. I, I've i already accepted this fact when I'm playing and people still make fun of me when I tell them that I play, but it's okay. I've accepted that already. Other people out there, they need to accept that fact, <laughs> you know? And what has made me laugh is, so it's harder, right? Like, if you're watching players you have no idea and you're watching a video, it's like, oh, okay, you like, you know, it's easy to be judgmental. So I went back and uh-huh. found tournament matches of any of our from all sorts of different ratings of players in Minnesota that I personally know yeah. and can vouch their playing level. So I found 5-0 matches, I found some 4-5 matches, I found some 4-0, and I read all the comments and mm-hmm. every single time people were like, 5-0 players, actually some of them are even playing pro events now. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, this is for sure 4-0 back in my state. And I'm like, dude, I can literally verify how good these people are. So it they just make it look that easy. That's what it is, man. They make it look that easy. Dude, I don't even know if it's easy or what it is, but it I just it made me laugh when I could verify some of these because like, that's crazy. Okay. That- I have a question now for you then. When you meet somebody for the first time or you watch them play, you know you're you're gonna have them next. You haven't met them before, you're at a rec court. Um, when you first, like, what are you looking for c- to gauge their level? Cause I'm assuming when you're watching somebody, you're in your head, you're gauging their level. So 
what is it that you look for? Are there any telltale signs of someone's rating or level if you just kind of watch them play? I mean, I feel like it's so many small things that it's like impossible to go over. I think generally speaking, when you see certain traits, you you know, you kind of pick up on it. Like how long does a dinking rally last? What do their hands look like? What does, you know, a drive, a put away, their drops, like, you know, all sorts of just small things. But I do think that because a lot of people haven't seen them play on video and of course in person, it looks even faster. Like if you've ever watched pros on your computer and then watched it in person, it's a completely different game. It looks so much faster yeah. in person. And same thing, even at the amateur level on video, it just looks horribly slow, horribly unathletic. And I feel like if you haven't ever seen yourself on video, that leads you to believe like, no, nah, I look better than these guys for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, the truth of the, the matter is, is that pickleball does look slow and unathletic. And it's because most of the times it is <laughs> that's, for sure. <laughs> like that's what it is, <laughs> you, you know? And it I, that's not saying that it couldn't be athletic. It couldn't be fast. But to me, it feels like 80%, 90% of the time, it is slow. It is unathletic. I mean, that's the whole reason why, I mean, I can play doubles in croc slides and <laughs> still have success or play with, you know, the pickle paddle that's, you know, the size of his little spoon and still have success at a high level because, I don't know, it's, it is technically easy, you know? I will, I will say, though, uh, we're going to get to this in a minute, but I'll jump ahead for half a second here. I went and watched some like three, five, four, oh, tennis matches. And oh, I'm like, man, tennis players always goofing on pickleball players saying they look unathletic. Have you ever watched three, five tennis? Because it tennis doesn't is, look like they know how to do anything. Three, five tennis is pretty bad. Three, five tennis, even four, oh, tennis for the most part. Like, yeah, you know, it looks really choppy, like not coordinated, not coordinated, is awkward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like techniques are not that great but you know you compete at that that four level and then even some at four five but once you start getting to four five five then you start seeing better sound technique um for, for sure. sure i mean i played a lot of four five tennis back in my day usta um you know and i played against some five o's i used to train with some people who went to like college um you know for tennis and yeah like it's it's up until it's i mean it's kind of like the same in pickleball like three o to three five pickleball and tennis kind of yeah it looks awkward looks unathletic yeah. it's hard <laughs> it's hard dude for sure and uh one thing i did also do is i went and looked up a ton of gold medal matches at huge tournaments like nationals u.s okay. open golden qualifiers like the types of tournaments where if you made it to a gold medal match it usually means that you are a quarter point or a half point above what the listed division is. So if, mm -hmm. if that's a four or five gold medal match, a lot of times it's five O's or four seven fives playing in it. Or, you know, four O gold medal match probably means it's four fives, right? It's yeah. very rare that an exact four O is winning these huge tournaments. Yeah. Okay. So I looked these up. And even with that knowledge, I again I even looked up players that I have personally seen play uh -huh. that I know are good. And everyone's like, Nah, man, this 5-0 gold medal match or 4-5 gold medal match, no way this is this level. And I'm like, dude, that's actually insane that you're saying that right now. You know, it's interesting. I had a conversation with some of the people here in uh, my city and some of my friends when we're rating people, right? Or just players who are just coming in on the record and they're just asking my opinion. I tend to rate a little differently. At least, like, what I, I mean, I rate via skill like what skill sets you have you know how's your forehand look backhand look things like that and some other people they rate based off of results right it's like could this person win a 4-0 tournament mm. like could this person win a 4-5 and i'm like i don't really like that because i mean what if the pool or the bracket is of like you know a 36 team bracket and you got in fourth place right like and you always get in fourth or fifth right does and, and you're playing 4-5 does that make you not a four or five just because you couldn't get a medal and so i don't know i think results um is a poor way of looking at it i think you need to look at skill set right and that goes back to why i was asking you what do you look for in a rec player to kind of gauge their skill like if you only had you know maybe a few points to watch 
Um, I know you said it's a lot of different things, and it's true because it's very nuanced. But for me, the first thing I look is footwork, how they move, how do the vol like if I see a drive and how they accept the receive the drive like do they drop it to do they volley back how do their volleys look and how do their resets look that's usually the first thing that i look at and then um kind of like step back speed ups on the bounce is usually a good telltale sign of the level for me so those are like the few first things that i kind of look at yeah for sure and i i always think it's a little bit tough too because i think you can have players that seriously excel in certain areas but are really bad in others yes. like i can think of players here who have really bad mobility they have really wonky backhands like just things you should not ever do with your backhand but they play four or five pickleball mm -hmm. just fine but if you looked at them for certain shots you would for sure go this guy's a three five but then other things like hands are so strong yeah that it makes up for the speed. lack yep yep and it's funny, I actually even think I have this problem. I think, and I think I've said this before, but my worst skill set, in my opinion, is my hands. And that's the thing I've been working on the most right now, specifically countering the ball. I think I think the skill set that I have right now is probably closer to a four, two, five level player in terms of counters. But then mm -hmm. I think everything else yeah, is higher sure. than that. Or a lot of other things are higher than that. So it's funny the things that are holding you back. Like, I don't think I will hit 5-0 really consistently until I can clean up my counters because they're just yeah. pathetic for where I am right now. No, I would agree with that, seeing you play and seeing you develop. I would say that your hands are still the weakest, but I think you have, like, really strong resets. Your dinking is pretty good. Um your bounce, your speed ups off the bounce now are pretty solid. Some of those, I would say, I think your resets are close to five O levels. I would say, I think it's probably. I think resets are trait. probably my highest, that's your like my best trait. Yeah, 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 for sure. I would agree. Your, so your now, serves are getting pretty nice too. I'm not gonna lie. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll then, take it. and then if you can play like that one time you played with your left hand back in Las Vegas <laughs> with that, what was it? Was it a backhand like one? It was a forehand. Oh my oh, that. gosh. No, yeah, the one handed backhand was nasty left handed. Dude, I was like, yo, maybe you should just switch to lefty if you could do that again. That's like, you know, that was 5 0 plus. I was like, whew. All right. I don't want to see that, Chris. Shoot. <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's one of the biggest ironies mm -hmm. I laughed going through these YouTube. So I watched 4 0, 4 5, 5 0, and everyone always said, this is lower than what you're saying it is. Uh -huh. Then I was like, what are people saying for 3 0 and 3 5 matches? I went through gold medal matches, uh -huh. random amateur matches. I went through probably dozens of videos. Almost every single time, the comments for that, the lower level ratings, they would say, these guys are sandbagging for sure. None of these are 3-5. <laughs> so I'm like, if you go up to 4-0, everyone says, no way these are 4-0s, and then even higher. But then you get to 3-5, and everyone's a sandbagger. So I'm like, yeah. make up your mind. These The people out there have a clear, you know, idea in their mind of what a three or three five looks like and a four or four five looks like and they just don't match up that's that's has to be what it is you know yeah it has to be what it, it is it's actually crazy to me and i think there's a couple things i think potentially there's two things that are the biggest contributors to this one on video i think generally the ball looks like it's moving slower uh, it's easier to spot flaws versus in person and whatnot. And the other thing is that I think ratings in pickleball are such a disaster for the most part that there's a lot of people who think they're way better than they are. For example, you might have like your local Jerry at the courts who's like, I'm a four or five for sure. Like he's just a self proclaimed four or uh -huh. five, and none of these people play tournaments. And they're like, well, I beat Jerry all the time or, you know, <laughs> Jerry looks better than these guys on YouTube. So he, I must be higher rating. And I think, <laughs> I think that some of it is people don't have a good gauge for what these ratings actually look like. And these skill sets are supposed to be because they're playing in a small pool of people at like their local park. Yeah. And then it also doesn't help that I, I guess higher level pickleball, it's, it looks easy right mm -hmm. because when mm -hmm. you get better you know you're simplifying your movements and your strokes and so things just look 
easier. And, um, you know, I think that has to do with it. For sure. And uh, last thing, or one of the last things on this note, I was like, you know what? Is tennis the same way? Are people like uh -huh. toxic in the comments of every tennis match? I looked up tons of ratings for tennis and yeah. looked at the comments. Total opposite of pickleball. I'm not even kidding you. Everyone's like, wow, these players are so strong for 4-0. Or wow, that guy, he might be a 4-0, but he's got a 4-5 serve all day. And then pickleball is complete 180. Like, I... Yeah. <laughs> Pickleball is the opposite, right? It's very welcoming in the beginning. Well, for the most part, right? I think it's still generally very welcoming for new players. And then, of course, when you get online, the comments are just toxic. Or it's becoming and then, toxic. <laughs> and then it's funny because tennis is the opposite. Like a lot of people talk about it, it's very clicky. It can be snobbish. It's hard oh, to yeah. get into these groups. Then you it go is. online and everyone's like, wow, man, you are a great tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> I like, mean... Shoot. What is going on, dude? Uh, I haven't, I mean, haven't made any videos on tennis, but like, I can see that, and I don't know what it is. It's like because once you get into tennis, you're you're part of that club now. You're part of, you know, the tennis elite club. You know, you become part of the clique. You know what I'm saying? That's why. So that's why everybody's nice to each other. That's what it is. You, you guys should let us know down in the comments what you think. It is why people in pickleball consistently say, oh, there's no way this is X, Y, and Z rating because I think there are a lot of things that contribute, but it just baffles me that you almost can't find a video on YouTube where people aren't saying that. It I have found a few, but they're far and few between that exist. Uh, yeah, I would have thought people would be nicer to us in our paddle no, battle no. review. Wait, why, why not? Why do you think people would be nicer to us? I, I think the the more well-known you are, you're a bigger target or like easier to make fun of. Okay, I guess that's true, but like that doesn't, maybe it's for, okay, I'm trying to think of other large, you know, YouTuber influencers in the pickleball space. Let's say Kai. Oh, I mean, you can't say anything to Kai. The man literally plays pro and like, I don't know, like would, I wonder if Kyle got any of those comments when, if he ever posted a match footage or anything like that. Do you think he ever got any of that? I don't know that he ever posted a lot of amateur games, so probably not. But I'm sure if he did post a bunch of them, it was it would be bound to happen, right? I'm yeah, I can't I tell you how so. many pickleball videos I watched tonight and looked at the comments, and it's wild. But like, what do we have to do? I mean, so now if if he posted it up now, like no one's gonna say anything because like, no way that'd be crazy. They'd be crazy to say that. Okay, so what do we have to do? Do we have to start? winning some like pro qualities or something like what, what do we got to do to change people's minds man here here's what i've established i actually i thought about this this week i was like okay uh-huh how good do you have to get at pickleball before people stop making fun of you for certain things or say like oh actually that's a really good player and i was like it actually doesn't matter what level you get to right when you're below 4-0 people are probably gonna say you're not good at pickleball Anything between 4-0 and 5-0, they're probably still going to say you're not that great at pickleball. And then even <laughs> when you get to low-level pros, like a Grand Bond, people are still going to say you're not good at pickleball. <laughs> no, you can't be saying that to you know, my homie Grant. How are you going to do him like that? It's okay. All, you know, you can also be, you know, you, Christopher Olsen. You'll never be good at pickleball. You'll be 3, 4, 3 4 5 at best forever. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Grant was just the first person that came to my mind, but you could also throw... Actually, you know what? Another <laughs> great one, a great example? Sam Who? Query. They actually teamed up this past weekend, so it they was did. perfect. It was a match yes. made in heaven. <laughs> they did get a win, and uh, <laughs> I love, I love that Sam is leading into oh, like his yes. meme, his his meme world, or you know for that sure. he's a meme. It's so funny, and I love actually, him for it. I think that is the best way if you like really wanted to deal with it, leaning into it. And making fun of yourself would be the ultimate way because then people are just yeah, like, "That's what you do." So yeah, they're like, "He's already making you." <laughs> you just do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I I really think that it almost doesn't matter where you are. Even high level pickleball players, you know, they have a bad match and everyone's like, "Ah, this uh, this pro player sucks," and it's like, "Okay, well they don't." But oh my sure. gosh, I just had an epiphany. Is that why you got pickled? The first game is because you're a big brain and you were just like, okay, I'm going to do this for my own personal branding. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get pickled 15-0. <laughs> is that what happened? You can tell and then me. Anything okay. after that, people yeah. are like, he's better than I thought he was. 
<laughs> Yo, guys, if, if, you, and, if you guys out there haven't watched the Paddle Battle review video, you should go there and watch it. And I'm going to say it, it turned out just how I thought it would turn out. I was going to smoke all of you guys. And it happened. <laughs> you didn't smoke everyone. I mean, 15 0 in the first well, one, and then 15 3 in the so, second one. I don't know. Oh, okay. You and I, I guess, did beat the other two 15 3. Yeah, it's because exactly. I was on your team. I carried you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happened in the first game? What happened? In the I first told you. Game? You just figured me out. I tanked it for my brand. It was a good oh, thing for the my. brand. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. And then, then honestly, I should have I should have beaten you guys fifteen like seven in the third game too. Oh man, <laughs> but you didn't. I tanked. But no. you didn't. I had to give you guys something. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't have you know. The humiliation would have been far too high, you know. Here's the crazy part, Well, I tried to throw game three, so it was also good for my brand, and we still won. So I don't know what that really <laughs> said. <laughs> Damn, you did a good job, man. Shoot, I wouldn't have known. I didn't know. Damn, you can just sweat on command. You know, you were sweating bullets, and I didn't know you could miss Ernie's and whiff just like that, you know. But wow, you did really good. Somebody give this man an Oscar for his acting abilities. <laughs> I know, right? I might have to switch careers. Uh, okay, anyways, that's most of what we had to say about ratings. I just thought it was super funny seeing the comments and then digging deeper into Pickleball YouTube and just going, wow, you will never escape this no matter who you are. For the, In fact, the only way I think you could actually do it is if you were like a 5-0 player and you posted the video and said, this is 4-0 gameplay. Like, I think if you set the tone way lower than what you are, then people are like, dang. Mm. Yeah, they're good. So Yeah, but you, you didn't know. say that, though, right? We didn't we didn't put no, 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 no. a specified rating or level no. on the video title, right? We just had to, like, you, you, you just made a random title. Well, not a random yeah. title, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but I bet you if I said, like, oh, this is 4-0 gameplay, people just would have been like, oh, yeah, that's 4-0, even though, like, Almost three of the people are 5-0 or are now playing 5-0 tournaments or have played. The people in your OPPL league or whatever mm -hmm. are literally five, probably 5-5 five, five plus to pro. Yeah, some of them are. Yep, they are. And, I'm and you won it. I did, but like not without a lot of help. Not without a lot of help. Not without a lot of help. That's what I mean. I'm, that just goes to show you the level you know, on your worst day and on your best day, you know, and it's, it's shortening that gap. That is yeah. the hardest thing. Usually like if I see you, if I know you can play 5-0 or pro level, like I'm still taking account how consistent you are day to day, right? If I totally. see you on a really bad day and I'm like, okay, that's going to drop your rating down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just how I look at it. For sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah. So we've made it to the kitchen. And last week we did a giveaway, Will. Oh yeah. And uh, who won? Someone, you know, I, uh, I believe his name was Thomas, if I'm recalling that correctly. Congratulations, and his Thomas. Out. We're gonna do this again because Engage had given me a bunch of paddles, and they just said, "Hey, you can give these away." And I, they've the been sitting ones? in my. Uh, no, not the not the Pro One. These oh, are the Extreme Evolution V2 and the Pursuit Pro Max. I don't remember how many they gave me, but it was a ton of them. And I've been meaning to get rid of these somehow, so we're just going to do another giveaway. So right, if you've made go. it this far, DM me at the Pickleball Studio on Instagram, not at the Pickleball Studio, and just say Engage Winner 2, and whoever is first, you will get an Engage Paddle. And... Again, I pretty much promise you within 20 minutes, I will see your message if you won. And after that, I'm not going to respond to every single one and tell you that you didn't win. So if you don't hear from me, you didn't win. But I promise you, if you win, you will hear from me shortly. How how many responses did you get? I'm very curious. I lost track. Oh, it so wasn't it, was... it wasn't like a hundred plus or something like that. It oh, was probably okay. probably like 20 to 30 ish oh really that's it hey hey you guys listening out there you guys have a good shot there's only 20 something and yeah, go at it go at here's it. here's my thought here's why i think there wasn't more one because you have to make it this far on the pod and i'm guessing not that many people make it this far on the pod consistently and then the other thing is if you see this pod eight hours into the day you're like someone else already won this for sure oh however true. there actually were some people who dm'd me like two days after the pod and i was like 
oh, it was worth a shot. Maybe if yeah. nobody did it. Exactly. Maybe everybody thought that somebody else got it, so they didn't even bother. And then somebody who came two days later got it. Like, imagine that happened. That would be crazy. Or imagine you're just really generous and you decided to give a second one away. Who knows? I'm not going to lie. I debated doing that last week. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. All right, guys. Start just rolling it into Chris's DMs. <laughs> oh boy all right so we don't have uh, a ton for the kitchen this week but i just thought it would be fun to go over there yeah. was a lot of tennis versus pickleball beef this week <laughs> with mr christian alshon the tweener king himself okay set the world on fire with a tweet you want to read that yeah i'm gonna read the tweet from christian alshon for those of you who don't know christian alshon is a uh you know, professional pickleball player. He kind of came on the scene. I would say, I mean, he's a, like kind of a veteran now, but he was relatively new and he rose up the ranks really quick. He's known for making tweener shots and really, I don't know, crazy shots. Anyways, so this tweet said, pickleball has made me a much better athlete than tennis ever did. Faster reaction time and speed are needed since the ball is only coming from 10 feet away. Point for point, pickleball requires more skill than tennis. Whew. He did this April 2nd. At 9.37 a.m. <laughs> and it's gotten 1.4 million views. And he had a few responses from people in the tennis world. And just, I mean, shoot. What, do you, all right, what, do you, what, what are your thoughts on this? Do you, do you, first of all, do you agree with him or do you disagree with him? You play a little tennis. What do you think? Okay, so at the highest level, there's just no way. I mean, no way. I, I just, I don't think I agree with that at all, but I don't think the statement is entirely incorrect depending on what you're benchmarking it. But if you took whatever our most decorated pickleball, like let's just say you want to take Ben and then yeah. you want to take like Djokovic, yes. there's no way you're putting these two athletes on the same pedestal and saying like, Ben is as good of an athlete as Djokovic. There's no way. And if Ben mm -hmm. tried to go and play Tennis with Djokovic is going to get absolutely spanked. Yes. and But, you know, vice versa, Djokovic coming into pickleball right now would also get spanked. I think if you were going to base it solely off of reaction time, I think you it's faster in, in pickleball being 14 feet away from someone and some of these speed ups or hand battles. Mm -hmm. But So if you're basing it only off of that, but if you're saying like, yeah. How decorated you have to be as an athlete to p compete at the highest level, tennis is going to take the cake. Yeah, I think if you're talking about overall athleticism, for sure. Uh, I And I think at, I would say, until you get to the higher level, I would say 5-0 plus, you know, 5-0 to pro. Like, athleticism for tennis, higher. And at the lower levels, I, in my opinion, they're they're closer than you would think. And you know what? I So I would disagree with this. And here's the thing. I agree with most of it. It's it's his last sentence in his tweet. He said, point for point, pickleball requires more skill than tennis. Everything else before that where he says, pickleball has made me a much better athlete than tennis ever did. Sure, that's great. That's fine. That's his personal opinion, his personal experience. Fine, right? And then second sentence, faster reaction time and speed are needed since the ball is only coming from 10 feet away. I would say that is also a fairly true statement for the most part but his last his last sentence is really what sets it off because that puts it into context when he says point for point pickleball requires more skill than tennis and i'm like nah bro i totally disagree i mean when he did it i thought this was an april fool's thing because i thought it was on april 1st right but yo christian knows what he's doing there's no i i just can't believe that he would actually believe this he did this as a bait right and oh boy, did people oh, take the bait. They <laughs> took the bait. I mean, the fact that he got Nick Kyrgios to respond is insane. Oh man, I was like, Nick, don't do it. Don't do it. I was just like, if this is true, I was like, James Blake first um, responded. I mean, let, me, let me just read you the responses. James Blake said first, uh, former professional tennis player. I think he also invests in a major league team or invests in pickleball in some way, shape or form. But he said, ha, James Blake said, ha, that might be because you are playing at a pretty low level of tennis. Now, I don't know what James Blake considers low level of tennis, but Christian Oshon did play, I think, D1 tennis. He played, I know he played at UVA for a short time, and UVA is a D1, like really, you know, high level tennis school. And he went to another school in Chicago. I'm sure he played tennis there. 
So I was like, okay, I don't know if that's considered low level of tennis because I wouldn't. And then he said, maybe if you were familiar with athleticism it takes to excel at the sport, you would realize how ridiculous this statement is. And I would agree with him. But also, I don't know if James Blake like maybe searched up who Christian Alshon is and maybe looked at where he played. I don't know. That's I. That is debatable what he did or not. But, ooh, first hook, line, and sinker. And then the next one, <laughs> Nick Kyrgios. Oh, King Kyrgios himself. All right. And he said, yeah, let's hide under the bed after this statement. Ha, ha, ha. Bro, get me the best pickleball player and compare his talent to Roger Federer. Wild tweet. Wild thought. Delete right now. Crying face emoji. And Nick said, I love pickle, but you had too many tequilas. And so, I mean, Nick set it off as a joke. And I would kind of agree with Nick here as well. Um, and I'm sure, dude, there's there's so many. Like Now, this is I have an interesting so counter much. for you okay. that I want to yeah. pick your Hit brain me. on. Hit me. So, while we pretty much both agreed the highest level of tennis, it's going to be harder yes. for it's just going to be harder, but, but, but we have had plenty at this point of decorated tennis athletes come into pickleball and not one of them has reached number one. Most of them really not even that close except Jack Sock. He is the best former high level tennis player that is mm -hmm. well respected come in and is still not the best Yeah. after, you know, really? at least at least like a year at least a year i mean yeah it's gonna take him a little bit longer and it's it's true i said this before like so wait what was the original question again like well it's just like the thought that you know i guess I, there wasn't really a question inside of it but you've had these elite tennis players come over that people i'm sure if you had tennis players say okay sam query jack sock Jeannie bouchard any of these people if you said yeah. hey if they went over to pickleball how fast do you think they would become number one? And people probably would have even said for Sam, oh, pff, give him two months and he'll be number I one. Mean, Sam, Sam said he, he was like, give me three months. That definitely didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> and it, it depends on the skill set that you have in tennis because some of the skill sets required to be successful in tennis, you know, that you need to be in tennis aren't necessarily the skill sets that are going to help you in pickleball. Jack Sock has seen, you know, some successes because he was – a high level top level doubles tennis player and he also played pickleball but it also just goes to show you that you know people, people say this to me all the time right you know they used to argue in some of my match play footage on my channel like dude i can come and pick a ball and i could come beat you i played tennis this and that and they just assume that i never played tennis you know or i played tennis at not a very high level and i mean at a, i played at a high like pretty decent rec high rec level i would say um and you know i always rebuttal with this statement i'm like okay you're a four or five tennis player or, you know, um, UTR of like seven to eight and a half or something, which is, you know, fairly high for rec level. I was like, okay, if I also play tennis, okay. And we were this, we were, our skills were the same in tennis. Right. And I've been playing pickleball for two years, three years, and you just came in. What makes you think that you can beat me if our tennis skill experience was the same? And I played a game that you haven't touched and I have three years experience on top hell no, you're not going to beat me. Are you freaking kidding me? And that's also kind of the same argument or the same kind of mindset you have to think about in tennis. Like you could be a very high level tennis athlete. And let's just say Ben Johnson, you know, he played some tennis, he played table tennis. And, you know, if he went to tennis, no, no shot. He's going to, you know, be up there in maybe the top 100, top 200, right? But he knows enough tennis. And then he's had so much experience playing pickleball. You take another random somebody in like the 200s ranking in tennis or whatever and if they have no pickleball experience they come in what's going to be the difference maker right it's going to be that experience some of the skill sets does go over and i'm sure there will be some um outliers of people who you know play tennis who just pick up pickleball really quick right um because it's just hand-eye coordination and pickleball is easier i'm never i'm never going to say that pickleball is harder to play than tennis because in my opinion, that's just not true. But I do think people underestimate how difficult it can be. And people don't take into account the experience, you know? Yeah. I, I'd be very curious to know what has to happen in pickleball. Like how athletic does it have to get? What type of athlete do we have to have? Because we have some very athletic people. I mean, Christian Alshon is very athletic. Jame yeah. is very athletic. Fed. Like you could go on and on and name all these athletic people. Mm -hmm. Well, 
if they went over to tennis, they might not be, you know, top 500, 300, 100, whatever you want to pick. I wonder how athletic we have to get before people are like, yeah, these guys like are actual athletes that are very good at what they do, yeah. like compared to a tennis player. Like, you know, I feel like you're just always going to look at a top 10 tennis player and go, yeah, this guy's more athletic. But I Dude, feel like yeah. even if you took some of those guys over here with their athleticism now, it doesn't just mean they're going to crush it. Right, because, I mean, pickleball, like, the athleticism doesn't play nearly as much of a role because the game is very easy. It's it's It neutralizes the athleticism required. That's, you know, kind of the, you know, the goal of pickleball is to even the playing field, right? And now I will say this, that now it's easier than ever for former tennis players to come in, and I feel like to kind of, find immediate success because dude these paddles are so good now right yeah you get so much spin there's so much power you can hit it with you can hit some of these paddles with a semi-western grip when i came into the game maybe like two three years ago it was very hard it was possible to do a semi-western grip but you still had to like you really had to have good racket yeah to really good timing yeah you had to really work but now it's easier than ever so if you had a good tennis stroke like it is easier than ever to come in and be you know Five O and be a banger because like you can totally, you can totally do it, you know. And yeah. before, you couldn't do that. And the thing is, when I argue with tennis players, right, is like tennis is such a execution heavy kind of game and sport, very unforgiving, right? The rackets are really big, long, they're heavy, and then the strings just bounce that ball off like really far, so very unforgiving. So a lot of tennis players spend literally decades, their lifetime perfecting stroke execution, and they still can't master it, right? And the people who have really good stroke execution, sometimes that's all you need to win a tennis match, like 3-5 to 4-0, even to like 4-5 right but once you get to four five plus and five oh in tennis right most rec tennis players don't what's the difference maker if everybody like you know let's say top 100 in tennis in the world top 200 even top like i don't know 400 right everybody has strong serves you know pretty good stroke mechanics there's minor nuances where you know people are a little bit better than other, but it's so small only like the best coaches can really find it but when you have all that everything is all equal what's the difference maker right why is Djokovic? Nadal, Alcaraz, why are those guys like in the top 10, right? And it's because of, you know, court IQ, right? They 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 know when to hit the shots. They know how to construct points. And in pickleball, you get that much early on because you don't have such a high ceiling for execution. Everybody can kind of execute. It's very forgiving. So the difference maker is um, shot selection and the moments you choose those shots and court IQ. And that's why pickleball... It's fun. It kind of democratizes that so people can have fun because that part of tennis is actually really fun when you can kind of play chess. And pickleball, you can get to that level where you can kind of play chess a lot sooner. And that's why we all love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very interesting. Also, another thing that I think is kind of fascinating when looking at pickleball versus tennis and why I part of what I think makes pickleball look um, almost silly at times, at, at least in the higher levels, is you see people like miss a dink in the net, right? And if you're just yeah. watching this, you're going, there's no shot I would ever miss that easy soft ball in the net. However, again, TV doesn't show it very well. But the other thing that I think is interesting and people don't think about a lot is the margin you are aiming for mm-hmm. over the net is so much slimmer than in tennis. Like you might be aiming five, 10 yeah. feet, however high over the net in tennis because you're just hitting these giant top spin drives. In pickleball, it's like, you don't have the luxury to hit the ball three feet over the net. That's going to go straight into someone's counter zone and just like crush the ball. Like even a couple inches extra over the net might be the difference of someone speeding it up in your chest or dinking the ball. Right. Exactly. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I don't know. It just, yeah, it doesn't show well right now on, on TV and on, on video. Like you have to make it so it's obvious to you know the the regular viewer who's really not into pickleball that much or hasn't watched pickleball like how do you make them understand that they're aiming for a very low part of the net or like they're aiming for very low margins i think the only way is if you've just played it yeah you either have to play it or they have to put some sort of overlay on the screen so you can kind of see like oh this is like 
a green zone or a red zone or a yellow zone for your opponent and they're aiming for this like red zone so they can't attack the ball like you know it's so it's it's really hard to see and yeah I, I don't know we still got ways to go when it comes to that and yeah more people need to play and more people need to record themselves playing to see how they look like and they can really gauge and and understand <laughs> um you know how difficult it can be but i like to say that i don't know pickleball requires more skill than tennis by christian is totally absurd i'm sorry christian i don't i don't agree with you um <laughs> like there's just no way but i don't know christian i i i still feel like he's he's playing the big brain play and he's totally oh, did that on sure. purpose to bait <laughs> to, to bait this and he's milking it in and he he got them hook line saying dang christian you're a good fish you you, you a good fisherman man that's all i gotta say you good at fish. Shoot. he caught got a curious him. that's a rare catch <laughs> Yes. Maybe maybe he'll catch Djokovic or Federer next. No, no. They're they're totally are you kidding me? No, there's no way Djokovic or Federer say they're totally beyond that. Here's the thing. If you are actually a very good like tennis player, I just feel like you wouldn't waste your time responding or saying crap like that. Like so whenever I see somebody in my comments or doing comments over pickleball like saying how stupid or dumb it is and they'll say oh i play tennis or whatever i'm like you might play tennis but you probably suck like because i feel like if you're a good <laughs> tennis player right if you're a good tennis player you first of all you wouldn't waste your time saying that and maybe you are good and you i don't know just want to make somebody mad but to me like i think if you were actually a good tennis player and you got to a level where court iq and you know angles and setting up points right and you were well-rounded you played doubles singles you could see, you know, kind of the beauty of pickleball and why people like it. And you wouldn't say something like that. You wouldn't be mean to pickleball. Maybe you don't like it, like, which is fine. But I think if you're a high left, high enough level tennis player and you understood those, those things, you wouldn't waste your time saying, I don't know, like you wouldn't be a hater. You, you wouldn't waste your time being a hater. You know what I'm saying? I mean, why does anyone waste their time being a hater on an internet comment? I've never understood it. It it's to this it's, day still baffles yeah, weak me. Egos, weak egos, or I don't know. They need to put something down to make them feel better. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I don't know. Crazy. All at right. the end of the day, at the that, end of the day, keep it coming. Keep the comments coming because honestly, you're just feeding the algorithm. It's fine, <laughs> yo. And I'm here to troll y'all, anyways. In the comments, it's perfectly fine. Somebody <laughs> said some somebody like I don't know if you've seen my my clip that I posted with uh, pickleball on ice. We played pickleball w with tennis rules, and that got yeah. the algorithm caught some people who also play tennis. And ooh, the comments in there are just so funny to me. Some dude was like, said something, and I was like, and. Like, oh, fault or whatever. The kitchen is stupid or whatever. This looks way better. And then I was like, yeah, the kitchen is dumb. I don't like cooking in there either or something like that. Something <laughs> stupid, right? I wasn't even really responsive, but he said something along the lines of, dude, pigball is so dumb. I don't know what you're cooking in there. And I was like, bro, I just told you I don't cook. You won't find me in the <laughs> kitchen. Relax. It's not a big deal. So anyways, I don't know. People are just dumb. <laughs> the internet's a wild place, man. The internet is a wild place wild place but yeah but we're glad that you're on the internet watching our content listening to our content thank you guys yes we appreciate <laughs> it we appreciate it all right that's all i got for this week anything else for you will no nah, that's it good stuff good times um uh and i guess comment down below if you guys want to see the rematch between me chris john q and brayden i'm sure they're training really heavily chris cannot believe he got pickled 15 oh and there's no way you that know he faked that because his response to that was just too, too real, too true, too true. We'll find out the next time we do it. Okay. All right. Keep training, Chris. <laughs> Keep training. All right. Catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace.